So, uh, about five, ten years ago, well, I'd say about five years ago, I wanted to move into Linux. But the biggest stopper for me at the time of moving into Linux was being able to play games. And so, five years ago, it was a wild west time of games. It was very much like the 90s of gaming in Windows, that sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you have to upgrade your graphics card just to get something to work. And in the last five years, there have been huge changes in uh, Linux and the support for games on Linux. So I wanted to take some time to talk about some of the tips and tricks that I have found getting games to work on Linux machines. And so hopefully that will help a few people do the full conversion because at this point I'm down to one Windows computer floating around the house and that's for my wife to do homework. <laughs> so everything else is Linux in the house and I'm happy for it. Mind somebody grabbing the door? <coughs> So, there's quite a few different ways to, to play games on Linux, and I'm going to try to talk about them, in my opinion, the easiest to the hardest way to get games to work. <laughs> so, sometimes it will be running it on Wine will work perfectly, and installing it native will, will have some kind of bug in it, but usually... Trying to get a game to work in this order is going to give you the best results. So games that run natively first are games that are written for Linux and designed for Linux. So typically that tends to be the easiest way to get games installed. Then you're going to have ported games that have some code written specifically for Linux for that game to work on a Linux system. Uh, the Steam games and the Steam library that's built for Linux is phenomenal and is super easy to set up and super easy to get to work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> next you're going to have games that are compiled from source, which is, gets, starts getting pretty tricky. And then you're going to have a system called Play on Linux, which is like a graphic uh, front end for Wine. And then you're going to have uh, Ludris that didn't make it on this slide, but I'll talk about it towards the end which is another graphic front end for Wine. And then the last but not least, the hard stop, if you can't get anything else to work, then you might be able to get it to work in Wine. And I'll talk a little bit about what Wine is and, and how Wine works. So, first, the first thing that I found out when I started, I decided I'm going to talk about this, and I started writing this speech, I found out immediately that the distro that you choose to run games on is important. So I started on my Parrot OS build at home, which is a derivative of Debian, and I installed Steam and I tried to install their, their, their gold level, should always work, uh, a game, did not work, <laughs> and crashed. And so I could get a few things to work all right there, but it just was not working and I was trying to get uh, uh, new graphics drivers installed and that wasn't working and so finally I dual booted my home computer and I started booting into Ubuntu and right after I booted in, into Ubuntu without doing any other tweaks those games started working the first time so if games are very important to you I recommend looking at either distros that are specifically designed for uh, gaming and so I've got listed up here, uh, this FOSS article is a, is a very interesting article. It's got pros and cons of each of these different distributions. And there are distributions that are specifically designed for gaming. So SteamOS I put up at the top because that is Steam's new operating system just for playing their games. Uh, but it's only going to play Steam games. So uh, Console Linux is like uh, for kids. Uh, Game Drift Linux is based on Ubuntu. Um, on that FOSS list, there was also a, a Fedora OS or a Fedora-based OS for gaming. Um, and then Ubuntu also has a lot of driver support, a lot of support to be able to get things to run. And I put Debian down at the bottom of the list, and I wanted to put it in red because Debian has out-of-date drivers, and it tends to lag behind a little bit, and so it is more difficult to get things to run on Debian um, than it is to get on some, some other ones. 
And I'm sure Gen 2, you probably want to know what you're doing before you're trying to okay. compile games from source and <laughs> compile drivers from source. And Actually, if you need to compile the games from source, Gen 2 is a is really it, yeah. nice tech toolkit. For yeah. Me. It's actually probably easier. Yeah, because it's already it is, ready yeah. to, to, to go on that. But uh, uh, that's one recommendation that I have, is that you kind of think forward about which distribution you're going to use. And I just dual booted about 200 gigs just for games um, in Ubuntu. So graphics drivers. So graphics drivers are going to be uh, <coughs> paramount if you're going to be playing more modern games. And so I just threw up a couple simple commands that you can use in terminal to determine which games you are, which graphics drivers you are running, and then possibly install some new graphics drivers. So uh, LSHW is list hardware. And uh, you can search for your video drivers in there, and it'll tell you which video graphics uh, drivers you're running. Um, Mod Info is going to tell you which uh, module you have plugged into your kernel, which the graphics driver is a module that plugs into the kernel. Um, so once you get this uh, LSHW Taxi video, it's going to spit out the identification key for your graphics driver. And then you use mod info and that key to tell you which module you're running in your, in your kernel to tell you which graphics driver is actually plugged in and working. Um, and I looked it up. Both Radeon and NVIDIA, directly from their websites, are sending out packaged graphics drivers. So figure out what kind of graphics card you have. Go to their website. And you can actually download directly from them the latest graphics drivers for your card. Um, so I did that with my Radeon. I downloaded the FGLRX graphics driver and installed that on my Ubuntu system. Good to go so that I don't have to worry about you know using other people's, you know, it's not open source software anymore. Um, so if that's really important to you, you go with the open source version. But um, you know it's from the manufacturer so you know it's gonna work. Well, hopefully it'll work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the other uh, tip that I found is directly in the app repositories, you have graphics drivers uh, built right in there. So just running sudo apt-get NVIDIA driver, um, some of these commands will help install the newest, latest drivers on there for you. And then down at the bottom, these are uh, for Vulkan. Vulkan is like an API for your graphics card, and so it's what some of the Steam games are running um, for their driver. So Mesa, Mesa is for um, specifically for Radeon. So these were some things that I found in some of the, the, the guides that I have run into. Useful commands. So first we're going to talk about native games and getting native games to run on Linux. So these are games that are originally intended for Linux. They are uh, written for Linux and you can usually install them with your app repository, yum, snap, uh, whatever you use, so sudo apt-get install whatever game that you're looking for. And so those are typically, if it's in your app repository and it's available, that's what I would go to first to try to get something installed. You also might be able to find it if you go to a company's website and you go download it, if it comes as an app image or a .deb file, um, what are some other pre-compiled uh, files that would be easy RPM. to install. RPM files. Um, um, whatever SUSE uses. Yeah, so there's there's these pre-compiled package files. Um, so Debian and Ubuntu will both run .deb files. And it's just like running an executable. You double click it and it will install that game for you. So if you can find it in that format, that would be my first go-to. So then uh, the next one would be a ported game. So that's a game originally designed for some other system. Um, so Doom was originally designed for Windows 95, I believe. Um, but people have written programs that will run even this game that was designed for Windows 95. In fact, you can get Doom to run on anything with the screen. Um, <laughs> there's a website called willitrundoom.com, and it will run Doom. Um, <laughs> So uh, they've installed it on TI-83 calculators and, and all sorts of crazy <laughs> stuff. Um, uh, printers, uh, Kodak cameras. And, um, but, so you can download the, the port 
directly from the apt repository. So this is sudo apt get doomsday. And then if you find the old doom.wad file and point doomsday at doom.wad, it will play the game for you. So you might be able to find a bunch of other games that way. Um, that being said, some of these games are copyrighted. So if you don't own them, then you might have to go find, be able to find old copies of them, if that makes any sense. Um, and so typically you can, you can download the wrapper or the, um, the, the port from your app repository or from a dev file or something like that. So Steam. So Steam is where I spent most of my time when I got ready for this speech. Installing Steam, configuring Steam, figuring out some tricks. Um, is anyone here familiar with Steam, Steam Library? Do you own any Steam games? Okay, so a few people. Um, so Steam is a program that is written by Valve Software, and it is a huge library of games. There's millions of games inside of Steam. And so, uh, what's about three years ago, they released a Steam store for Linux. It's originally uh, intended for uh, Ubuntu, but I know that it works well in Debian, and I believe pretty well in Fedora. You probably run on Gentoo too, right? Yeah, it yeah. Well so it run, runs yeah. well on Gentoo. Ubuntu and Jaro. Yeah, Arch, so, so. yeah, it's got a very large support base for the store page. So it is easy to use sudo apt-get install steam, and it will install Steam on there for you, and once you get logged in, you should be able to at least browse through the library of games and be able to look at games and what's available out there. <laughs> and so if you want to start out with very simple, not a lot of configuration, not a lot of messing with it, then you use the Steam store to search for Steam OS plus Linux. And so in the drop-down menu, that is an option that you can check for specifically looking for Steam OS <coughs> and Linux games. And that will give you, that will kind of keep you inside of the native for Linux games through the Steam Store. Um, and then if you want to get a little bit more brave, then you can go into the settings of Steam, and you go down to Steam Play, and you check this box here, it's probably too small for most people to read, but it says Enable Steam Play for Supported Titles. I'm getting technical. Uh, enable Steam Play for Supported Titles. And so Steam Play is something that Steam has come out with recently that is called Proton. And so Proton is an API for Wine for Windows games. So what it does is it is translating between the Linux system and uh, the Wine program on your computer, and it's translating back and forth to get Windows games to run on Linux. And so if you check this top box up here, you get access to about 10 or 15 of their whitelisted games. Their whitelisted games are ones that they've verified should work on all systems. It includes the Doom from 2016, the original Doom, um, about 10 or 15 titles. And so if you stay in that zone, those are all guaranteed to work. That being said, on my Debian system, the first game I tried to install was Doom from 2016, and it didn't work. So uh, it still requires uh, up-to-date graphics cards, it still requires some uh, up-to-date packages, um, and but it's supposed to work uh, out of the box, ready to go. So it's already been vetted and verified. So if you want to get a little bit more ambitious than that, then you can check this box down on the bottom and say enable Steam Play for all titles. And then it will allow you to download any game in the Steam library, millions and millions of games, and try to run it through Steam with Proton. And so that's where things start to get a little bit tricky, and I wanted to tell you guys about some configuration options that I found to get my games to work. So uh, it's using that same Proton system and you can look up what games are rated for Proton in ProtonDB.com. And so ProtonDB lists all the games that are in Steam or that people have tested in Steam. So there's a lot of games out there that nobody's probably tested. 
but all the major games, somebody has tested them and has rated them as platinum, gold, or silver, bronze, or garbage, I think is the lowest. <laughs> <laughs> and so you can check if you want to play um, I Got Grim Dawn. Has anyone here played Grim Dawn? Yeah! yeah. yeah. So uh, has anyone here played Diablo 3? Okay. So let me offend everyone in the room by saying Grim Dawn is everything that Diablo 3 should have been. <laughs> Diablo 2 is better, and Grim Dawn is like Diablo 2 and like expanded. It's amazing. I highly recommend it. So I got that game to work, and I went on Proton DB and I looked up Grim Dawn, and it told me, hey, this is a gold level game. And different people will get it to work, get it to work with their graphics drivers, and they'll post their configurations, any tweaks that they did to get the game to work, and then they will rate it on their system, platinum, gold, silver, bronze, garbage. And so you can scroll through the, um, the configurations to find out some tricks on what different people did to get that specific game to work on their system. And so through using some of these different games and figuring out how to get a few different games, I figured out that if you right click on the game and you click on uh, properties and you go to the set launch options uh, uh, button right here, so set launch options, then you get this little box right here and you can type in certain keywords to configure that game. And when it launches, it will use these commands to launch the game and that will change the behavior of the game. And so the one that I found that worked for my system is Proton Use Wine uh, uh, 3D11, which is um, DirectX 11. Um, so if you know Windows and DirectX, it's the, uh, the, the, I don't know what it is, it's not a graphics driver, but it's... Uh, it's a daemon that helps you yeah. drive up. So yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the, the, the daemon that can communicates with the graphics driver to display everything up on the, up on the screen. So I'm telling it to use Wine 3 with DirectX 11, and that's what made everything start working for me. Um, and then you can also tell it um, which, uh, down below it says, force the use of a specific Steam Play. And so Proton has gone through, I think, about five different versions. And so people in ProtonDB will tell you hey, I used Proton 3.6, and that worked better. Or it only runs on Proton 4.2, and you can tell it specifically which level, which uh, version of Proton to run the game with. Yeah. So you can, you can do that down here, and then you can even do it right inside of this block. So Steam has a, uh, in the Steam community, they have a wiki of all the different commands and what they do if you enter it into this block. So also... If you go into the file system and you go to uh, your home drive, .steam, which is a hidden folder, so you have to enable hidden folders, uh, Steam, is it, uh, Steam Apps, Common, and the version of Proton that you're using, there is a file in there called user settings preview.py. And if you go into that file, and you comment out some of these lines, it will change the behavior of Proton for the entire system. So I can specify for all of Proton 4.2 to only use Wine 3 with DirectX 11. So that way I don't have to go into each game and modify that run on command. And then you have to change it from user settings preview.py to user settings.py and it will read that file and follow whatever instructions are inside of it. And so it's literally got the template right here. All you do is take off the hashtag at the front of the line and then that enables that setting. You save it, you close it, you restart Steam and it should follow those directions for how to launch that game and how to run that game. So I did this with uh, Doom, which is a whitelisted game runs beautifully on my computer, um, and I've got like a five-year-old graphics card. That's the other great thing about Linux, is that Linux is like super low requirements for everything else. It's not eating a lot of system resources, so your computer has more resources available to give to the game to be able to play the game. 
so I ran. Uh, Doom from 2016, uh, probably a 10 year old graphics card now that I think about it. Because um, five years would be about as old as Doom is, and it's older than that. Um, and then I ran Grim Dawn uh, very well. And then I ran uh, Neverwinter, which is a 2013 game, but it's a MMO online. It ran pretty well for that. Um, and so these are all games that, you know, they did right for Linux, and through a few con simple configurations on Steam Proton, uh, I can download and install and run right on my Linux computer. And also, World of Warcraft was one of the first games to really run well on Linux because they already had written a whole side part of it for Mac OS X. Nice. So there was already the Unix support there, so yep. to kind of port that over to Linux was real. So. Yep. And so, uh, unfortunately, World of Warcraft is outside of the Steam library area, but some of the other options that I'm going to talk about should talk about uh, world, should run World of Warcraft pretty well um, if it's if it's supported like that. Do you have a question? No. Okay. Um, so that being said, you're stuck inside the Steam library if you're talking about this stuff, unless you import a game that's already on your computer into Steam and then tell Steam to run it with Proton, which is a little bit tricky, and then you're getting really off the reservation trying to get something to work, and you might want to try some of these other options. So, next one that I came up with is uh, compiling from source. So, compiling from source, I've always had a hard time on, but you'll usually find um, a source code for games uh, come as like a .targz file or a .tar file, and it will have a make file inside and usually a readme file inside. And so if you're going to use this system for installing a game on your Linux computer, you should open up the guide, you should read through it, you should follow the directions, um, <laughs> make sure that you install the dependencies before you install the, the, the package, because it can be a bit tricky. Now I wanted to ask uh, some of the more knowledgeable members in here today, because I, I don't know the answer, um, if uh, it calls for a package that is out of date in my app repository. So if it needs, you know, screen 0.99 and I have screen 1.0, should I go into my app repository and download the older version? Or is there something that you can do in the source code to tell it that it wants to use screen 1.0 or whatever the dependency is? Well, generally the packages are built with a hardness off dependency list. Mm. And so it's like, it says, hey, I'm, I'm okay, I just need GCC. Yeah. Or I need GCC this version, or I need GCC between this version and that version. And so uh, if you have dependency conflicts <coughs> and you're building your stuff directly out of uh, the distro, mm -hmm. so like let's say it's, it's Debian, mm -hmm. and you have a dependency conflict, mm -hmm. um, provided that you're not running some kind of crazy... Um, build where you're like combining like a couple of different types uh, like you're you're running like a half unstable half stable system yeah other than that <laughs> like i'm running a half parrot os half debian system right what I'm doing. which might be what Cause, cause, you, you might be introducing a package conflict yeah. that the package maintainer did not Didn't foresee because what I like to do is I like to install Parrot OS and then immediately add all the Debian repositories. <laughs> okay, and you can, you can actually cause a lot of problems from doing yeah. that. Uh, but if you are purely, like, let's say I'm, I'm running Debian testing, mm -hmm. and I, the whole system is Debian testing, and it's only the Debian testing repositories, and that problem comes up, bring it up to the package maintainer. Because that's a, that's a problem that probably everybody that has that is having, yeah. and yeah, you need to file up on with that. If you're running some kind of a uh, like a hybrid system, then you need to do a lot more investigation. Usually, your config the config file for the package <coughs> will say looking for this version greater than or equal to mm -hmm. X or point nine nine or whatever. Yeah, I, re I remember just one problem I'd run into. It said, "Hey, this one isn't available." And I installed the newer one. It said, "Hey, this one isn't available." I'm like, "Yeah." I got the new one. What do you want from me? You can <laughs> manipulate it uh, if you know what you're doing. Yeah. And um, if basically, let's say that it says, hey, I have a dependency on screen 0.98, mm -hmm. and I have screen 1.02. 
well, screen may have changed. And so if you know that the behavior that this program is looking for is okay in this, and maybe the package maintainer hasn't gotten around to it yet, maybe they stopped maintaining the package, maybe it's not maintained uh, in the package light, you can go in and uh, test it yourself, work on it, go maybe suggest a, a code revision in the um, in Whatever the, in I'm the Linux. Yeah. Yeah. Or in the, the repository itself. Yeah. So, um, Barry, like, so uh, I kind of have an issue with Qubit Torrent, where if you wanted to run the most current version of Qubit mm -hmm. on Debian, you need to install the new version of libtorrent. And in yep. that case, libtorrent is only used for torrenting. I mean, your other programs aren't really going to call yep. into it. So you're like, okay, well, I'm not going to break anything most likely if I just put the new one in there because that's the only one using it. But if, now let's say if it's something very in there, like you wanted to backdate your GCC compiler or something like that, like, you could probably break something. Yeah. You know, oh, so, yes. you know, there's, there's, I guess it really depends on what the dependency is and what else uses it. Yep. And then, you know. So it gets tricky, <laughs> and I'd recommend doing a lot of Googling. <laughs> most, sounds like, most to the list. Yeah. <laughs> this is too much work to play a stupid game. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so one is don't give up. <laughs> right? yeah. And so and so it's funny as I've actually spent hours trying to get a game to work and then got it to work and didn't want to play the game. <laughs> it's like the fun part the fun part was installing it on the computer. And then I didn't want to play it after that. <laughs> that happened when I played uh, when I installed Duke Nukem 3D. I was like I got it to run, got through the first level and I was like, well, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, once you knock out Nicholas Cage in that game, it's a solved cut. Uh, there's Nicholas Cage's in that game? <laughs> the new dude? No, no, I'm talking about the original oh, one from when I was a kid. Well, if you I got that one to work. If you just think of one of those like grizzly faced whatever gargoyle things you fight, is one of them is Nicholas Cage, then yes, he is in the game. Sure. This is where I'm at. So, uh, the next one that I found was Play on Linux. And so, Play on Linux is a pretty slick uh, program that you can install. So, you install Play on Linux. Play on Linux will go out and install Wine for you. And then you click on the install button, and you look through their list of uh, games that they have available, and you pick which one you want, and it will install it for you. It'll configure Wine for you. Um, it'll get it all set up. So it kind of uh, is a shortcut to getting Wine to run some games. So I know on this list I've seen uh, Age of Empires, Age of Empires 3, uh, Diablo 2, um, some older uh, Command and Conquer, mostly like older games. Um, so if you still have the disks for those floating around somewhere, um, then Play on Linux is a pretty good system to use. What's up? As I, as I remember, when I used Play on Linux, when you're going through to install the games, they'll have a comment section and people will be like, I built it on this architecture or this architecture, or it was built on this one. So you kind of have an idea of like, okay, well I got most of the same thing, so it should, you know. Yep. And then they, they have red, uh, like the red highlights on games that are, they're still testing, that they're, they're still in development. So if you, that's the game that you want to install, maybe that's not the way to uh, to. Or uh, sometimes I'll tell you which which systems it breaks on. Yep. Too. Yep. So you can kind of read into the settings and figure out if that one's going to be supported on there. Getting close to the end here. We're going to have to stretch for time now. Um, you're good, you're good. There, there's really only one thing I wanted to get out of this meeting. Um, before I die, I'd like to beat Umoria. Is there anybody who's beaten Umoria? What is that? I guess it's a game. Have you heard of Rogue and NetHack? Yeah. 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 I've heard you, of NetHack. You, Moria, and then you, Moria, is the uh, port to Linux. Well, have you played World of Warcraft? That's like World of Warcraft's, you know, pioneer granddaddy in ASCII. In ASCII. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, the, the little characters are just ones and zeros moving around? Yeah, you got like little numbers and you know, text-based adventures or ASCII? <laughs> no, it's like it's like a graphical <laughs> thing where you go slash the clear icky thing and do that over. <laughs> <laughs> I have to Google that one tonight. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Come on, um, am I the only person? No, I know. I know I'm you gonna to die. I've been before. on NetHack. You had me until NetHack, and then you lost me. Okay. <laughs> I mean, every now and then I, I have a real craving to play a mud, but you know. <laughs> Do they have muds anymore? Yeah. That's why I fell out of college. Have a tarp. Do you really want to get started on that? Yeah, that's still around. What's what's a, what's a mud? Uh, Multi-user multi dungeon. dungeon. Um, it's a text based. Do you remember Zork? But it's yeah. multi-user. Yeah. It's like Zork. Yeah, Zork's on NetHack. 
or telehack. Telehack is what has <laughs> has Zorg. So Think of it like the ham community. Yeah. It's exactly that. Yeah, yeah. I know what a text based Do you still have to tell that into the mud? <laughs> oh, you can actually use uh, a bash terminal um, on Linux. You run it yeah, you, locally. You, you almost have to tell that. And there are people that take it really seriously. Like, I remember I, I used some nomenclature that wasn't in that world. And they're like, don't mix genres. Like, oh. oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, um, so the last one that I found that it was really useful um, and it was really easy to work was Lutris. So Lutris is again a graphical front end for Wine. And so uh, I went in, I downloaded Lutris, I installed Lutris. It says, hey, you want to download the Vulkan libraries to get things to work. And their um, uh, GitHub page had a lot of really cool details. That was where I got most of the commands for identifying graphics drivers and updating graphics drivers was from their GitHub page. And then uh, you go to the Lutris website, you find the game that you want to install, and you download the installer and it opens with Lutris. And it's basically a shell script that installs and configures your game for you. So when you do that, um, like, I did League of Legends because I tried to get League of Legends to run online like two years ago and gave up because it just didn't work. And so that was the first one that I picked for this because I knew it was free and I knew you could just download it. And it downloaded it for me, installed it on the computer, and ran the first time. No problem. So, um, Lutris is another really neat one that you just find the right file, you uh, hit the install, give it the CD or whatever information it needs, and it's going to install. And it recognizes uh, Steam, uh, Play on Linux, Wine, all and native games, and it recognizes those and will install them the right way, depending on which system you want it to install on. So it does, it's kind of, they actually have uh, Gentoo stuff on their wiki too. Yeah, which I was very surprised. Yeah, about. yeah, they they have, and yeah, it was it was interesting because I went to their website, I hit download, and it just had all the distros available for all the different builds, so Ubuntu and Debian and just everything. So they're they are really doing a lot of extra support for Linux and it just makes Wine much simpler. So is this your go-to? I think it will be in the future. So um, that and Steam between the two of them. So Steam, most things work easy enough with Steam that I wouldn't worry about getting it to work with this. Um, but one thing that I was working on at about 11 o'clock last night when I finished writing the speech uh, was trying to get Final Fantasy X Remastered to run on Steam, which I bought on Steam, but I haven't gotten it to run with Steam Proton yet. And I was trying to get this to get that to work. So I've been wasting my life playing DOTA 2. Yeah, and <laughs> that's I'm a good one. I'm like the king of abandons. That runs natively on Linux too. Well, I, I, apparently I have to abandon like every third game because it just freezes my computer and I have to do you know power button reset. So s some suggestions that I have for that is run it in a window and keep, um, keep a terminal open next to it. And I like to run HTOP and I like to watch the bars along the top to see is my uh, uh, memory maxing out, is my CPU maxing out, is there something that it's running out of resources so I bet you'll find as you run the first and second game, your memory is going to start to fill up. And then you hit that third game and your memory is just going to be stuffed and it's not going to want to continue running anymore. No shit. Um, the other thing that I like to do is I like to run Steam or the game from Terminal. And Standard Out will have a lot of useful information. And if the game crashes, wherever it crashes, that's where the information is going to be right there in the terminal. So instead of double clicking on the icon for Steam, I'll open up Terminal, run Steam, and I'll watch all the output from Steam as it goes along. So I actually had during testing, probably pull up, getting off the reservation here, so I'm going to get in trouble. Uh, this is an unedited screenshot from my computer, so we'll, we'll see what we get here. So I have, over here I have Steam, and then I have uh, watch uh, error.log inside of the Steam directory. So watch is a command that will every so often run the command again and give you the output. 
So I, will, I use watch, tack, n, uh, I think two, or I use the default uh, time frame. So every two seconds, it would cap the file and then read the output of the file, and it gives me, I was getting the first 25, or the most recent 25 lines of the log. So actually what I was using is I was using watch, tail, uh, with 25 lines. And so what it would do is every two seconds it would run tail of that file and give me whatever the last 25 lines of that file were. So that as this game is running, I'm catching all the errors right here on the side. You can okay. do a tail minus F, and it will just open, it will open the file and then just keep going. Annotating? Yeah. Yep. So t tail minus F, and it'll just, just keep giving you. And then over here I have HTOP. And then down here I just, and this is Tmux, so it's Tmux in uh, three different windows. And then down here I just had an open terminal so that I could jump into it and kill Steam if it locked up so bad that I couldn't keep going. So that's what I would do in a window and just watch what's going on and then that way you can catch whatever error might happen. Or I might, and then later on I ended up running Steam right here so I could see the output from Steam while I was over here working. It has a made up a cleaner to clean up the memory unused? To yes, it does. Up? Well, it's Steam like, might, yeah. but does uh, Dota? Because Dota it's might also have a It's probably a memory leak. Every program has that. Mm -hmm. Every single program has Especially that. Especially if you've got, you know, how many gigs of memory do you have, do you know? No, I just got a laptop. Yeah. So, so uh, two, <laughs> four, six gigabytes of memory, maybe. <laughs> Linux is really good about logging things. Yeah. you got to check your logs. Yeah. And, and if and it is so, a memory leak, there might be a patch for it. But you yeah. know, ordinary Windows users don't have to do all this stuff just to play a game. In the 90s, I did. Yeah. I yeah. really did in the 90s. And that, that was, it was the it's wild the west of getting yeah, things This is the wild west of computing. We're not... We're no, you normally want, I argue for Linux. Go, Tonight I'm arguing about the Windows. <laughs> go, go buy you a Mac <laughs> and uh, play the Mac games. The all three of them. Mm -hmm. all three. <laughs> <laughs> There's also streaming. You can stream. Like yes. So that's that's another thing. I didn't really include it in the talk as much, but if you have a Windows computer or a Mac computer at home, um, uh, well, is Google streaming from somewhere else now, or is that in your home? It's like, a, it's like a, they do this console play. I don't know yeah. if it's going to be like you can game on Linux. Okay, so on browser. I know I've done before. What I did before Proton came out is that I had my Windows desktop sitting at my desk where my uncomfortable computer chair is and it was running Windows and then I take my laptop out in the living room and I would use um, streaming to stream the game from the desktop to the laptop that was running Linux. So that way you can stream it on the local network through Steam and now Google has a, has a streaming service also that you're running it on a Windows computer and it's basically a remote desktop to your or to actually, they, your laptop. Uh, actually, Google is running on their Linux servers. Yeah, it's oh, Linux. Yeah. Yeah. And it's streaming at full 1080 with game. almost zero lag. Yeah. So, wow. so they, they have the data centers all over the place for their uh -huh. search material. Mm -hmm. And so they're just adding capacity. And then they're actually pushing, uh, they've been doing code revisions and stuff to Proton as well because they want Proton to work really well. So that they can run Spine the games on, on a Linux, Linux computer in their data centers and then stream them to people. They just really, they just announced their streaming service at E3, didn't they, a couple yeah. months ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. brand new. You can pay a whole hundred and twenty dollars to be part of it. I and then, <laughs> you're on the beta? Or you, you, you said you're on the beta, right? I RSVP for a beta for like uh, NVIDIA, G, GeForce, something. Oh, the Shield stuff? Uh, well, they do streaming as well. Yeah. I don't know if it's Shield. But uh, I was able to get like Assassin's Creed 3 working, or Origins, <laughs> on my Mac computer without the fan going. Nice. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. All right. <laughs> so, like all right, we're, we're in stretching for time, so I would like to, oh, go, go ahead. Did you have any issues with 64-bit uh, and 32-bit incompatibilities? Uh, no, I actually did. I really? installed everything with a, in mind of having everything 64-bit, and I, a few things didn't work. A few things I said, okay, I'm going to get this to install now, and I'll you know, take pictures and put in the speech, and then it didn't work. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie, there are problems. What's up? No love for the ROMs? 
<laughs> yeah, so we were going to get into ROMs, but so here's the thing. So uh, emulators are uh, free to download. You can download an emulator and it will emulate old consoles like N64 and uh, uh, Super Nintendo, PlayStation, um, Atari, uh, Mame, all the old ones. The trick is that the emulators are legal and a lot of them are open source, but downloading the ROMs is technically illegal, it's technically pirating. So I didn't want to get into that like we endorse that, but most of that stuff is running very well on those. <laughs> We don't endorse yeah, we don't it, endorse but, it. We don't but we don't endorse it. Yeah. Especially, is the camera on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the camera's on, we're going to put all this on YouTube. Yeah, don't do illegal things. <laughs> is Steam OS actually an OS? Yes. Um, so, it's basically a boot. Yeah. I, I've, I've read before, because um, I'm into the idea of VR. I actually have a PlayStation VR, mm -hmm. and when it comes down to um, HTC and the Oculus, they apparently... I was reading up, and they don't officially support Linux, but apparently people have tried and had problems using them on Linux, but mm -hmm. does the Steam OS just support everything on the library? Because I think there are some Oculus titles on the Steam library. Steam OS supports everything for the Steam OS plus mm -hmm. Linux library. So if you sort or if you filter by operating system and pick Steam OS, that's the things that are supported. So there, I've, I think I've seen some the Oculus stuff in there, supported. but, hmm. yeah, that's the software. It's, it's the hardware that's not supported, well, it's not the software. So if it's an OS, can it be mounted on top of just plain terminal? What? You're running a VR, or a VM if you want to. Yeah, no, you wouldn't like, want to run it in a VM. Well, no, yeah. well it's even less here about beefies. <laughs> kind of like a doctor. You wouldn't want to run it in a VM. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I, like to, I like to be on the Games are very intense with their hardware uh, latencies, and yep. so you really need to have direct access to the video card, yep. direct access to the CPUs. You can do that through VM technology by using BTK and uh, or uh, BTD uh, stuff, where you actually pass material. So, like, you could have, um, for instance, one of my friends did this, and it worked. Okay, it's extremely difficult on the um, setup side. So, unless you want, if you want to really learn some stuff, <laughs> do this: build a Linux box. It's got two video cards in it. Run a Windows VM inside of the Linux box, and port one of the video cards to the Windows VM. There is a caveat, though. That is being that will be detected as cheating on many games because you're virtualizing an operating system, and since you're virtualizing the operating system, the game will actually be like, look, this guy's in a VM, so he's obviously cheating, and he'll get banned from a lot of things. <laughs> but if you get around all of that, <laughs> that would you be a cool way it. to do it. <laughs> I was thinking more like a Docker container. Docker is just a uh, high. It's not that's virtualization. Not, that's not virtualization. Yeah. I know. It's better be running just, you know, the old. Yeah. yeah. So. It's, it, think of Docker as just a container. It's literally just running a program. It's so it's no different than running a program. It's, it's basically, Docker is like only feeding it exactly what it needs, which might not be a bad idea, but that's more for limiting it from being able to get out and like vulnerabilities. Yeah. So, uh, fun story, since we've got some time and I haven't filled up the time yet, is <laughs> I once installed uh, Steam so that it would only run as root. Uh, <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah, right? And I hacked it to make it work as root. So, I was trying... Why? <laughs> so, Free uh, running, Callie. when I first started uh, coming to these meetings, I decided I was going to get Steam to run. And... I downloaded the top dot tar gz, you know, source code, and I was compiling it from source, and I was tired of typing sudo before every command, <laughs> so I ran sudo uh, su, so I switched user into root, and then I proceeded to compile and install Steam from source. Well, what I didn't realize is that I was installing it all into the root folder. So then, I closed out of that, I tried to run Steam as a regular user, and the regular user can't access the roots folder. 
so it wouldn't work. So I went into this, and then if you try to run Steam as root, it doesn't like that either because it has a flag that says, hey, don't let people run Steam as root because that's dumb. <laughs> so then I went in and I changed that flag to say, hey, you can't run this root. Because why not? And so the only way that I could run Steam on that computer was to run it as root. And of course, who wants to have to Actually, open terminal? Yeah, don't worry about any of that. And so, of course, who wants to, to have to open terminal every time you want to open Steam? So I just left it running like that all day long. <laughs> so then a couple months later, they announced that there was a vulnerability in Steam that was a remote code execution that had been around for 15 years and nobody had found it. And I said, I think it's about time to fix Steam so that I don't have to run it. It's about room. time to reform out your machine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get rid of that machine, yeah. start over. And I, I have ended up restarting, you know, refreshing and Probably your box they found it on. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at this one. This moron's been running Steam as root. So, don't do that. <laughs> I don't need to ever escalate privileges at all. <laughs> Unless you just want to make a really nice honeypot. Yeah. yeah. It's a great honeypot as long as you know that one. So let me log into their Wi Fi right here. Is it professionally evil or security is? Anyone know? It's. <laughs> is that are you serious? They have two Wi Fi's here. That, I'll tell you in a second. I mean, honestly, well, I don't prefer uh, to also log into secure ideas. We should. Professionally evil sounds like a honeypot. It's professionally evil, uh, but we can't tell you the password on camera. Oh, yeah, camera. Just, yeah, by all means, let's uh, post this on YouTube with the password. Yeah. One, two, three, yeah. four. Be sure everyone knows all the passwords. Make sure you edit that part on the video. The password's one, two, three, four. That'll trick them. You just keep telling them different passwords and they'll never know which one was the right one. As long as you don't find your luggage. <laughs> Perfect. All right, I'm in. So, I'm going to install Steam on this computer because I don't have it on this one yet. Pseudo. Uh, Sue. <laughs> Pseudo Sue. I'm going to show you how to install it the wrong way. Uh, update because I don't know if my repositories are up to date. All passwords are password. Except for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, that doesn't look good. Yeah, why don't you start uh, accepting signatures while we're here? Yeah. <laughs> What's that? I didn't yeah, that's, that, that means that you don't have a public key. Uh, you downloaded a repository uh, image, or uh, fit, which is that release.gpg, yeah. and you couldn't verify it because there was no public key to verify it. I wonder, so, if, I wonder if they're inspecting packets, if they're decrypting packets here. Well, that's the GPG key, it shouldn't matter, right? It would not TLS. No, they're not going to try to, like, no, that just means that okay. there's no, there is no um, key associated with promising. that file. You think it's going to I can tell you how to fix it, but then you would be installing a key over their open Wi Fi. Yeah, that's probably and I wouldn't do that. No. <laughs> Let's see if it'll work, anyways. It should. There you go. Do I want to continue? Why not? This is a burner computer anyway, so oh, I, don't, I don't keep anything on here. This is for like going to DEF CON CTS is what I yeah. envision for this one. You don't want to put a bunch of personal information on there. Yeah. Actually, when we get to the login step, I probably won't be able to do it because I'll have to get my 20 character password and my two forms of authentication. Yeah. And hey, no, it should be secure. I mean, I kept up all of uh, Hillary's backups of my laptop. I took it DEF CON. Oh, sweetie. Yeah. <laughs> She's talking at what, FireEye this year, right? Is she? You guys didn't hear that? Yeah, Hillary Clinton is the keynote speaker for FireEye. Why? The national, yeah. <laughs> Why indeed. Did, did you see the, uh, the Reddit post from her IT guy? Asked the, like, I have like a major VIP and I need to scrub her hard drive. Like, it's like, it's, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't say Hillary Clinton, but he's like, yeah. I need to take care of something. Yeah. How do I, how do I, with a rag? <laughs> Magnetize it first, absolutely. Yeah, I just took apart a bunch of hard drives and gave the plotters to my kid and they'll completely destroy them. <laughs> Five year olds can destroy anything.
I will say, a hard drive platter is probably That's the cleanest thing you've ever seen in your life. I am too. <laughs> So it's going to do a bunch of stuff and then Steam will be installed. Pretty simple. That's my favorite part about these meetings. Is watching watching, people watching green stuff. text. Uh, do we agree to their... I... <laughs> agree. I mean, that is definitely a way to take like 30 minutes and then you talk is so you compile for source. <laughs> I just watch a bunch of green text scroll across the screen. It's totally legit. Like well, we talk. Does anyone else have any questions about gaming on Linux? The only thing that would be better is if you had random parrot sounds going on. <laughs> How do we cheat at DOTA2? Uh, I don't know. I did enjoy that game a lot, though. So what's the most recent game that you've got to work There we go. How's that? Is that better? More entertaining? Still not hearing parrot sounds. Um, the most <laughs> recent <laughs> game that I that I got to work was probably um, Doom from 2016. So most of my game library is out of date anyways because I don't buy a lot of new games. But um, Doom ran, Doom ran well, the new Doom. Do they have Fortnite on Steam too? I think they do. When we get it installed, we'll have to check. All right. So now I should just be able to go. Games. Steam. And then it will update and it will run. Wow. Watching the bar. <laughs> That's fascinating. Here, we'll go back to that. The program itself was 250 meg and now it's up yeah. 350. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's just the base game, and then you got to download and update that's twice as big. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Oh, that's C-Matrix. C you ever seen that? No. Oh, that's all I mean, I've fun. seen, like, the, the screensaver, but I haven't seen the little program. Yeah. So this one, it just, um, you can go faster, you can go slower. How do you get, uh, is it? Pseudo app get installed. Well, I know how to install. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it's just, like, shortcuts inside of yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, they're all, they just, and then, uh, B... Turns on and off the bold, I think, and then A is asynchronous. So I like the asynchronous. Was, what, Just when C, I get bored. C matrix. C matrix. C matrix. Console matrix. So I assume can it's you, written in C. Can right? you? Yeah. Can you? Can you change the characters? No. Let's be written on. An N curses based so. app to show the scrolling screen yeah. from the matrix. Dungeon two. Show scrolling matrix like screen in Linux. Asynchronous scroll, bold, all characters bold, forces the Linux term type, Linux mode, use old style scrolling, no bold characters, screensaver mode, screensaver mode if you shake the cursor it turns off, X window mode if you use X term, print the information on exit, and then a delay. So you could, you could set it up to like a nine second delay just to be able to walk away and let people freak out. Oh, and then you can change the color. And then you can use all these keys. So you can set this up to screensaver <laughs> mode, set a delay, and then whenever you walk away, whenever you walk away from, yeah, your saw, from, yeah. from your SSH <laughs> session. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, obviously not a very good C. So and then these are all these are all you can do inside the inside the screensaver. You can hit all these keys to tweak things as you go along. Go back to where it was warning us about how yes. CPU intensive it was. Yeah. This is the real talk. Oh, it's it's not game to see. <laughs> yeah, in its uh, man page, it had uh, um, a, a warning. Yeah, about how CPU intensive yeah. it can be. Was that sarcastic? So, well, one and two are up to 100 percent. So that's those were at 100 percent before. Oh, it froze. Yeah, now it's frozen. Now it's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> kind of CPU intensive. Kill. Welcome to Club. Where we break things. <laughs> that's that's half. Oh, something. Wow. Finish. Sending all that data over. It's really right. mining cryptocurrency in the background. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what I was thinking. It's saying, why would you need 
40 percent of your CPU for this. Yeah, did you, did you look at the source? Maybe it's phony. <laughs> That's actually no. hash right there. No, I just install it on absolutely every Linux computer. The first thing I do is install uh, CalSay and CMatrix. Yeah. Yep. But I've never seen the source code. Some yeah. guy in Russia just got some Monero. Yeah, yeah he just made every work computer you've ever been on. Yeah. Wow, it is, it's filling up. You know, right, right now you're actually just funding the North Korean cyber terrorism. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I'm using a whole 14% you know, of my CPU on that. You know, the for communists. Well, that, yeah. yeah. And crypto Currency. Fascinating. All right. Where goes that download? <laughs> it's done. Yeah. He's logging into it. Yeah. Um, he's just killing time. Well, now that he's running C Matrix, the download is slowed to a halt. Yeah. You get 12 gigabytes of RAM in there? Yeah. 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 So this I got for free from a friend who couldn't fix it. I spent like four hours with him on the phone trying to fix it. And then I called him like two weeks later and he was like, yeah, I just bought a new one. I gave up on it. I was like, I will pay for shipping. And it was just his Windows that was messed up, and I didn't want Windows on it, so it worked out well. <laughs> this one was a really nice Asus gaming laptop because there was just a bad sector on his Windows hard drive. I just mapped it out and ran Linux on the other half of it. <laughs> so how many people still play Doom? Put in uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like the original? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah I've been walking yeah, through that. Yeah, really. I only like, beat the first section ever, and so like I've never played like. The you never? Uh, what do you mean? Yeah. Well, I, I beat that stuff like 27 years ago. <laughs> Actually, no one beat it until last year. What? No one. Because it was no fully one beat yet. Doom to a hundred percent until last year. And so what they found out is that there was, uh, it was an intentional Easter egg in Doom that you had to let a monster push you into the portal because you couldn't walk into it yourself. And it was a secret, so you couldn't get 100% everything done, 100% secret, unless you hacked the game or somebody figured out that that was the secret, that the monster pushes you into the portal until last year. I didn't know what was actually added to that. Watch a modern game go 10 years and nobody has solved one of the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> you don't find it to push you in the portal. You have to you have to stand there and the monster shoots you and it Which monster? You. Is this a side? Uh, it's the the ball that shoots out the flames. Oh really? Yeah, you got to go find one, have it chase you to where the portal is <laughs> and then stand in front of the portal and it shoots you and you pushes into the portal. It's all on YouTube. <laughs> and, and so is that when you go through the portal, they don't all attack you at the same time, or what? But when you go through the portal, it's a secret inside. It's a secret. It's a secret. It's a, secret. It's a doom secret. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> it's 100%. That's the important part. I just remember that pseudo and, and, and doom is ID behold. That was the first what? word that I could spell. <laughs> ID behold? ID behold was the first word I could spell. <laughs> Before I could spell my name, I could spell ID Behold. <laughs> wow. Yeah. How old are you? <laughs> 28. Man, that's, that's well, 20 that hurts my feelings. <laughs> 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 See you later. I'm on the way out. So Doom is this really old game that we yeah, used to like to play back in the 90s. <laughs> no wonder you couldn't tell me about you, Moria. <laughs> yeah, no clue. So, could you not finish Umoria because the game kept crashing? It's just too fucking hard. <laughs> Umoria is a game where you don't get to restart. You have to actually literally start a new character when you die. Uh, it's called a roguelike, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's that other one that's that's like Morrowind, but it's way more difficult? Like if you make Skyrim? One no, no, no. Yeah, before that? Uh, Dark something or another? Dark Crystal? Dark Souls? Dark Souls. Yeah, like, or you, you, yeah. you, the decision you make in like, the beginning of the game affects like the end game. Like, well, in their prelude, if you oh yeah, yeah, Dark you Souls. Survive and kill the beast. You get to see like the dragon, and then the dragon kills you. All right. <laughs> so here's the Steam store. Most of that was just me logging in with my 20 character now passwords. Now we have to download the game on the library. Uh, so now, yeah, we go to the library, and then if you see Steam. Steam OS, these are all the games that are officially supported for Steam like OS that are right there. in my library. Let's, let's listen to the Doom soundtrack while he downloads it. You know what's a cool soundtrack is the Magic Sword CD. Seems. Actually, uh, Steam I'm really OS. impressed with the Far Cry 3 soundtrack. Ugh, this is horrible size. 
changes the zoom on this? Zoom. You. I already tried that. I don't know. There's small small mode. mode. Small mode. Big picture mode. Big picture mode. Small. <laughs> Ultra small. Does it have alien isolation in there? Probably. You Five. Goodness. Yeah. These, this is my personal game library, by the way. Mostly just Half Life. Um, and Doom. Are they going to make another Half Life? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I they should game. make a Half Life Chernobyl. But, you know. <laughs> Well, they, that's actually, um, god damn it. There is a, there is a trouble game, but mm -hmm. why is it not sizing right? Or Metro 20. Uh, because the uh, resolution on this uh, screen is real, real stall Yeah, yeah, stalking. Uh, it's real low. Yeah, yeah, I, I think this, this, uh, thing is like 400 by 800 or something like that. Yeah. No, oh, 600 by 800. Six, six by eight. It's, it's, yeah. it's HDMI. Well, yeah. Because that's because it's HDMI. Yeah, <laughs> this is wild. All right, it's not working. Oh, so very they well. they released uh, Ultimate Doom for Linux. It looks like oh, it runs on this computer via Steam Play. Hey, via go. Steam Play. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, I I changed that setting. I wonder if it works. Now, when you it's one of the whitelisted ones, I think. When you set up Doom. the Steam Play, did you have to uh, go into the beta, like the beta section? No, you don't have to select beta. All you have to do is go Steam settings and then. Pick this option down on the bottom, Steam Play, and it's already it's already checked for supported titles, and then enable Steam Play for all titles is right below it, and that will allow you to to download and try to get anything to work. Could you demonstrate Grim Dawn for us? Actually, so, yeah, not so on I'm this running, computer. I'm oh. running Linux, and then I'm running DOSBox, or I'm running Linux with Wine to DOSBox to Doom. <laughs> <laughs> And it's I just installed it. Like I, I've never installed it. Since he's been sitting here, it just like it took me like three seconds. Mm -hmm. I just said go, and it's just like okay. <laughs> Steam Doom will run on anything. Yeah. Can you can you open Doom? Go to the last level and get the guy to shoot you into the portal. <laughs> yeah, go. Three, two, one, go. go. Yeah. Yeah. Before the, before this, you could probably you could probably can download Doom on uh, on Steam. So new Doom. 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 Oh, Doom Eternal, just that's the like next Doom. Doom. That's oh. a pre-order. It comes out in November. The Ultimate Doom. Ultimate Doom, Doom Classic, Classic Complete. Complete, still $14. Yeah. That's crazy. And people will buy it. <laughs> so $4 for Ultimate Doom. But you notice the little window, windows icon under it? What's up? You notice all the little windows icons? That's why they're $14. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the 25th, I'm actually on a panel for a Microsoft Developers Conference. That's weird. I know, right? I'm like, I don't use... Okay. <laughs> I don't... Okay. okay. <laughs> so does anyone else have any questions about the Steam specific? I've been trying to get down to this button to go... Steam OS plus Linux. So all these games are... Straight Linux. And so also if you see... If you see this icon right here, the Steam icon next to a game, that means that it runs natively on Linux or SteamOS. So that's that's the library that you can choose from without having to install Proton or anything. What are the... Probably. Go, go back up a little bit. What are those minus 80% and minus Oh, that's on sale. <laughs> Oh, 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 I got that's, it. Okay. That, that, that's when my wallet jumps out of my pants and my credit card jumps out of my wallet and I start buying things. And, and then I've even got the Steam app so that it pops up on my phone and says, hey, something that you've been looking for is on sale. And I'm like, no, not right now, Steam. I have to buy groceries. <laughs> You guys it also says how popular the game is. Yeah, how popular the, the game is. <laughs> the, oh, it's oh, down to eighty percent. Nobody's buying this one. Yeah. I'm, I'm still dying light right there. It was seventy percent off, and that's like a is with a new Sony release. Yeah, but does anybody actually play? <laughs> it's got good reviews. Is Euro Truck Simulator Two <laughs> the most expensive uh, game uh, on Steam? Is it? I believe so. With all the add-ons and stuff, I think it's actually like multiple thousands of dollars if you buy the whole thing. <laughs> the Essentials bundle is only 50 bucks. Why would you play that? They even have a Scandinavian addiction? Oh, come on. That's awesome. 
Maybe you can become certified. Yeah, it's a commercial license. Yeah. Come on. Can I be train simulator? That's the most expensive. But it's one of those. Train simulator. Oh, yeah. Come on, that's so boring. You can just sit there for hours. Yeah, of course. I don't know where I wish. At least when you drive a real car, you can really die, you know? I think unless you've ever Boy, played you play the game while driving, you haven't lived <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. Maybe there's some secret. <laughs> like, go look up a uh, train center. Oh, yes. I'm trying to find my <laughs> wish list. I, I'm always afraid that there's something really there that I just don't get it and I'm losing it. I'm missing out in life. Okay, so that's effectively the end of the effective part of the speech. Now we're just going to talk about games and stuff. So, right. well, thank, thank you Great presentation. Yeah,